we don't control insiders, this will be over and over. To lead by an any big fat love, find common ground to hold the spread of lies. And we must do it big fat love, find common ground to hold the spread of lies. When the president lies, what are you supposed to call it? Well, the editor of the Wall Street Journal thinks you can call it whatever you want as long as you don't call it a lie. Let's watch. Do you feel comfortable saying so-and-so lied? To be that, 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 you know, if somebody says just an outright falsehood, do you say the word lie? Is that important to start putting in reporting or not? You know, it's a good... I, I'd be careful about using the word lie. Um, lie implies much more than just saying something that's false. It implies a deliberate intent to mislead. I, I, don't, I, think, I think it's then up to the reader to make up their own mind, to say, this is what Donald Trump says, this is what a reliable, trustworthy news organization reports, and you know what? I don't think that's true. I think if you start ascribing um, a, uh, a moral intent, as it were, mm -hmm. to someone by saying that they've lied, I think you run the risk that you look like you are being, you're not being objective. I think people say, well, you know what, Hillary Clinton said a lot of things that were false. I don't recall the press being quite so, quite so concerned about saying that she lied when in headlines or in stories like that. Before John Iberola and Anna, I am better than you, Gaspar, and even start their commentary, I, young, you've got to listen. Hillary Clinton said she was under sniper fire. They had to come in some kind of strange pattern because the bullets are flying, duck and cover, get into the thing. The video is there, go check it out. She is a liar. Donald Trump, is he a liar? Thus far, it's been hard for me to pinpoint a lie like that. But is he a liar? I'm absolutely certain that he is. I, aren't they all? I think we did. Uh, now, are you concerned about appearing not objective? Obviously, I am not concerned with that. Um... Do you call it a lie, or do you simply say, he says this, here is some of our research, and now you can do You can't ask Anna Kasperi at something like this. And there's a real reason why. Anybody that follows the young turds or, or like me feels it's a moral duty to watch their horse manure every day and try to make sense of it and hopefully come out and shout in some small way and say, these people are freaking lying, hypocritical, moronic, driveling, spewing at you feel good crap so that you agree with them and you can't even ask her a question like this because she feels like her ideas and her opinions are the moral and superior high ground leaving you nowhere to stand aside for yourself so let me ask you something uh someone as, as an editor and editor-in-chief who's very very concerned about uh seeming objective so you can see already she stuttered. She stuttered because if you ask her, can somebody take the information and make up their own mind without you telling them what to think? She'll say no. She'll say I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. Do as I say it. Don't question it. When someone like Donald Trump gets supported by white supremacists like David Duke and then gets questioned about that support and what could have possibly led to a white supremacist support. Instead of a lot of superfluous explanation, I'm just going to go ahead and get it straight from the horse's mouth. Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. Him. Donald Trump responded with, I don't, I don't know who that is. He pretended as if he had no idea who David Duke was, even though there had been record video of him uh, talking about David Duke. There Extremely, extremely misleading is Miss Anna Casparione, and the, uh, this is a very good example of it. There has been, there's, uh, look it up. Trump says, "Oh, David Duke is a member of this. I don't want anything to do with it." That is how he has mentioned David Duke in the past. David Duke is a part of this. I'm not a part of it. It's not like he said, "Oh, I love David Duke." Not like she said, "I love Robert Byrd." Been evidence that he definitely knew who David Duke was, right? Um, so was was that a lie? Hey, or you're, you, you're I mean, ascribing I mean, moral intent. Is that moral? Oh my God, don't, don't mention that. Come on. I mean, look, 
Oh, come on, of course. Man, what is this? It's like Alex Jones just hires this new guy and he's exactly the same person. I wouldn't try around there. I love you, but dude, what you do? Are these people are so, they're so narcissistic. They have to have mini me's or they just, they feel like their life's not. Here's the biggest problem in the media right now. And, and it's what we talk about time and time again. And this doesn't have to do specifically with the Wall Street Journal. I think this is something that's indicative of mainstream media as a whole. And CNN, I would argue, is the number you can take what's indicative of the mainstream media and stuff it in your hole. Number one offender of this. This idea that neutrality is the same as objectivity. That if you just pretend as if both sides are equal at all times and you don't call people out on, on their, their misleading statements, their lies, their false statements, whatever it is, then you will appear objective and you will be fair. Don't misunderstand Miss Gasparian right here. She's saying you are only objective if you believe like she believes. And the only way to be impartial is if your ideas line up with her ideas and with, uh, with the jank Yeagers. You've got to be kidding me. It's not even about appearing objective. The reality is a lot of these publications and a lot of these cable news outlets just want access to these people. And someone like Donald Trump is not going to give you access if you call him a liar or if you call him out when he's misleading the American people. This is in fact a perfect example of news speak, a person taking what is real and making it unreal. If you just flip the names and replace Hillary Clinton for Donald Trump, Anna Kasparian would be 100 percent correct and that is amazing in an otherwise very incorrect record in fact he will try to retaliate against you as he did against the washington post when uh they did some negative reporting on him during his campaign yeah. right wrong miss kasparian when you lie about someone in the newspaper it's called liable and it is an actionable suitable very you get a lawyer uh they, they took he took their credentials away from them yeah. just because he didn't like the way they were covering him. So let's call it what it is, okay? The wall I'm fine with calling it what it is, Ms. Kasparian, as long as you'll call it what it is if you block Mark Dice or myself or the hard bastard or anybody that tries to tweet you and give their own opinions and you don't like them and you cut them off. What are you doing? Are you trying to admit to me that you're not really a journalist, Ms. Kasparian? Wall Street Journal wants to play ball. They want access. That's what it's really about. It's not about being ethical, being moral, or ensuring that you are an objective news source. That's not what it's about at all is that why you claim to be ethical is that why you say you're better than everyone is that why you pretend that the young turks is a reputable news source wake up miss kasparian you will not get many more calls i don't i don't know that i 100 percent agree with you even though the end result is the same i don't i don't think that they're they're moving in the right direction i think that this guy and i could be wrong i think that he came up through british media and uh, I'm probably going to betray my uh, lack of expertise about British politics, but I think that he, that philosophy that you saw in that video comes from a time when you were relatively more able to assume that the politicians are not going to outright lie. Or Holy crap, somebody let John I did it really did it, did the Ola out of his cage. Get that monkey back where he belongs. And if Chank Uger isn't plugged directly into him and he's not saying exactly what the sink of the yog wants him to say, well then shut that boy down. And assuming that your theory behind all of this is right, and he just comes from a different school of journalism where he assumes that American an outdated an outdated uh, school of journalism where he thinks that he that American people can just decide or figure out whether or not someone is intentionally being misleading. Keep in mind that this interview just happened, right? Yeah, keep in mind the interview just happened, and there's no possible way that you could decide what is right and wrong. I can't stomach any more of the young turds. I'm going to cut it off right here. I will leave a link in the description to this pile of horse manure that I no longer choose to ingest. Keep on coming back. Check out the hard bastard. Check out the Britisher. And remember, be good to your loved ones. Be quick to say that you're sorry. Be quick to accept their apology. Because in a time you think not, your loved one will depart from you.